Yo guys, what's going on? First thing is, I'm gonna start this video off. It's 6 a.m. in the morning, so cut me some slack. I'm like barely awake, so I just wanna throw that out at the beginning of the video. Two, I am back from my Dragalia loss, quote unquote vacation, I guess. Um, I've been playing that game pretty hardcore thanks to new content in that game, but that's for another video. We're gonna focus on the new Grand Blue Flask Gal banner for 2019 October. Bringing a dual unit. Oh, brother. So let's look at the, take a little look at this banner. Right up. Right up characters. We get a double wombo combo. I don't I don't remember the last time we got two units for Halloween. It's I don't think this ever happened before. And you know what? It's kind of scary. Cause that means that we may get three units for Christmas, maybe? Uh that mean more limited units to go after. I don't know how I feel about that. But we do have two new units, SR. We have Zeta and Vasharaga for Earth. So it's very important to notice that now all of society, um, Eustace, Bea, everybody, all of them are on Earth. Just know that Bea is an SR on Earth, but all of society is now possible to be played on one element, which is pretty cool if you're into that type of thing. So, the Vashiraga, right? Not to mention that they did announce Zeta and Vashiraga in uh, Grand Blue Versus coming out, what, 2020? So, pretty cool. They are limited, so, very important. And then we have the next unit being a Light Hal Senna, which is, she's, eh, she's cool. I don't, I don't really like her that much. As a character, great! I can't stand her, bro. <laughs> I'm sorry. She's just not the type of character for me, right? I understand people like her. Just not for me. Now we have Olivia having a rate up, which is very nice. So for people who are looking forward to rolling for Fallen Sword, uh, even though it's not like meta everywhere, it's still a very good weapon. So for people looking to roll for that, it is a rate up, so that's pretty cool. It's not a bad rate up. And I believe that's about it, right? There's no summons, rate up summons. This is nothing, nothing, so that's cool. The one thing that's really good about these Flash Fest gotchas is that there are no rate up summons. So for people who are going only for characters, it's pretty cool. We do seem to have the rank Thing again so if you pull any of the new units meaning Halloween Zeta Vasharaga Hal Senna or Zaza whatever her name is um, you do get a rank this is pretty cool I'll have to keep that in mind now you won't get the bonus by unlocking a character you already have you won't get the bonus by trading for a character with the beginner draw ticket special ticket or a links pick ticket so you have to pull these characters from the gotcha in order to gain the ring, which is very good. So it's, it's okay. Um, this only applies to newly added characters, by the way. This not, as I learned from my old, my um, previous video, this is only to newest added characters. So it has to be one of these three in order to gain the bonus, which is the ring and the EMP points, which are really going for the ring though. Um, generally the SR, it's not too hard to pull. I've had situations myself where the SR has taken me about 80 to 100 pulls, even some sparks. I didn't pull the SR. So it's really RNG. It didn't like, I wouldn't pull on every banner just to pull the SR, hoping for the rank. Because sometimes, you know, you can be that guy who sparks and you don't get the SR unit. I ha I've seen it happen. I have bad experience going for SR from John. So, uh, you know, it happens, it happens. I mean, John is probably the worst SR that ever, I ever had to go after. And I'd rather not live that experience again going for an SR. So let's go take a look at this banner here. Ooh, that's so pretty. 
Now, I'm gonna give a little brief look at the characters, right? I'll talk about them for a minute. I can't give you a thorough opinion about a character I have not played. People who do that, you, I mean, you're just talking out your butt, but I can give you like a, like a, a I guess a, a brief opinion, I guess? I mean, I can't really tell you how good they're gonna be, right? Oh man, go pull for these characters, they're crazy. I can't tell you that, but their skill two is crazy, bro. What is this skill two, bro? <laughs> First off, their Ogi is a dodge tank encounter. Um, uh, that's pretty cool for like stuff like Fa when they're getting taking hits. I think this unit is more supposed to be used in harder content. Um, dodge tank encounter is kind of cool, but unless they're taking aggro, which they do get from their skill two, it's not that great. Um. They don't take damage though, which is really good. Boost to attack, triple attack, bonus earth damage effect. Sharp hit to defense. See, this, this is why I don't like that skill too much. First off, the, her skills are linked, so you could either take the Magic Horizons or the Black Chambers. You don't get both effects. If you didn't know what a link skill is, there's a couple of characters in the game that have it. Recently, Monica is the most recent unit that have link skills. I really don't like them. You have to pick between what skill and they share a cooldown together. So I'm not a fan of it overall. Um, but... You know, you can either pick a more offensive build with the Magic Horizons, or you could pick the defensive build with the Black Chamber. Depending on the content, you're gonna pick what's best for you. Generally, the idea should be that low defense content or content where you don't have to worry about taking damage, Magic Horizons, far high level, Black Chamber. Because this, I mean, boost to cast the defense, hostility up, now you do get a hit to triple attack rate. I mean, this it doesn't matter to me. Um, I, I can't go and teach people about multi-attacking versus refreshing and all that. I, I really don't want to go into it, but the fact that you gain 800 earth damage to all foes when targeted by a foe while in effect, that's, that's this utter craziness in far high level. Um, I don't now I have to play with the unit, right? But looking at it, I think I think that's crazy and far high level. I don't have them yet, so I can't tell you. But it's, seeing that from what I've experienced with Athena, that's just steroids on this. Wow, Jesus! If they put a high cap on it, like two million, whew, oh brother! And that's every turn, oh brother! Hitting that skill all the time. Um, the skill three is two hit earth damage to a foe extend caster buff duration by one turn, excluding one turn buffs. Ooh, so that, that means they would get an extension to Freyer. Um, Urel gets an extension. What else we get? What's, what's really meta in earth? Gorilla gets an extension. Definitely pretty cool. Uh, I did wish it was party wide though, but them getting an extension to their buffs also as well. Um, it's really nice, but it's more than just their buff, right? Oh, wait, no. Extends caster buff duration by one turn. Is that their buff or is it all buffs? Hmm. I'm guessing it's all buffs, right? Because it says excludes one turn buffs, right? Why would they why would they add exclude one turn buffs? Cause none of these skills are one turn, right? At least yeah, and I mean I mean Ogi should not be one turn. Um, I don't know. But I, I would assume that it's all buffs on the character gets extended. So that's pretty cool. They give guaranteed multi-attack, which is very good. That means that they don't really care too much about Ultima. Their spear and axe as expected with Zeta and Vasharaga. Um Axe is okay in Earth, Spear, not too much. But they don't really have to worry about Ultima thanks to their skill one and skill two. So I wouldn't worry about them and the Ultima too much. And they do have the Yule passive at the end of turn in which the Zeta and Vashraga HP hits 50 or below, they get a full heal. Should be a full heal. It says restore its HP, should be a full heal, but I could be wrong. It could be a less than full heal. I can't tell you that right now. 
and it ends cooldowns for all Zeta and Vashraga's skills. That's okay. Not that bad. Um, their cooldowns are kind of long though, because the eight turns, but the uptime is really long, right? The cooldown, like these skills should be reduced by one upon beating level 80 and their uptimes eight turns. So, you know, that's why their cooldowns so long. They're okay. Um, personally, what I think I would like to have run them would be far high level, but I have to watch it. Uh, I don't. I don't think rolling on this band is really worth it right now. Just looking at their kit. I mean, their kit is great. Don't get me wrong, but it's not something where like you have to get this unit to be like competitive or something. Not that right now. But we'll be looking at the next unit, which is Hal Senna. Now, Hal Senna's. Massive light damage to a foe. Crazy beautiful. Beautiful. <laughs> oh my god, dude. This character is oh my god, dude. Oh brother. She's another axe unit. So hey, Vera gets a, a friend in the axe comp. Bonus damage based on also gets an Ogi nuke. Based on how much party all night. But that's okay. It depends on the values on it though. A nuke on Ogi is not bad. It can make her very good. Even if, how many does she start off with? She starts off with none, it looks like. I was gonna say that if she started off with a couple, it would be pretty decent for one turns. But if she didn't start off with anything, then it's not that great, unfortunately. Um, her th one thing I did notice is that her skill one does come with attack and defense down stackable. Um, this is very important. Light doesn't have a ton of stackable characters. The only one that they have that is actually meta is none of them because the other one that's a Christmas unit who just pretty, pretty character. See, comes with 30%. Now, if this is for if this is possibly 40, that would make her useful in my opinion. I don't know the value of it right now. It depends on how high the cap is. If you didn't know, every character has a different stackable cap. You can look on GBF Wiki if you wanna know how much each character is individually, but just know that not all characters stackables are the same cap. So that's a very important to learn. Um, it's also increasing her skill one before her uh, party all night by one. She gains a dodge and counter effect to cast her bonus light damage effect, but it also consumes her charge bar. 30% hmm. charge bar it consumed, it's not that bad. Um, it's okay, but all this for 30% charge bar for two turns seems very mediocre in my opinion. Um, in 2017, my fault, 2019. Why did I say 2017? I guess the skill is feels more like a 2017 skill to me. I don't think the skill is like that amazing right now. It's okay, but it's not like, oh my God. Now here is the real kicker here. Party Nightmare. Boost all foes attack and multi-attack rate. You heard that right, foes. That means the boss is about to become big, big boss. And he's going to slap you with multi-attacks left and right. Now, I don't know the percent on this boost, right? But I don't want to see it on any boss in my life. I'm not going to lie to you, bro. Luckily, it's local. So if you're crazy enough to hit this skill, you getting hit, not me. Um, now, what you get, though, it's pretty insane, though. Light allies deal guaranteed triple attacks. And you get a supplemental damage boost for 100k. That's insane. Just know that supplemental damage is based off of the boss's health. But at max in this one, you gain up to 100k. Now that's a big boost, a big, big boost of damage. However, it's only two turns. So it's more of a, like a really, really heavy burst gimmick. Um, probably usable with Rune Slayer, I believe. If I had to guess right, this is like the idea of Party Nightmares to be used with Rune Slayer. Um, so. I can definitely see this being used in their rune slayer comp, especially with all her other gimmicks, like her bonus light damage, if the stacks with everything, right? I, I can definitely see this being used in their rune slayer comp, but is it worth it? 
Um, I don't think I don't think this character is worth sparking either, honestly, in her current kit right now. So I would just say it's okay. Like this character, like Zeta and Vasharaga, right? They they I they okay, right? Okay, kit, but needs testing. Like um, this one, it's okay. Skill two looks banger though. <laughs> like I, I like skill two. I'm not gonna lie. Her the skill two on Zeta and Bashar, I like it a lot. But I really think it needs a little bit of testing before I can say, oh man, this unit, this unit is pretty cool. How Senna looks more like a Rune Slayer character to me. Looks for Rune Slayer comp. Rune Slayer comp. And I kind of need values last. On stackable. That's about it, really. I, I can't really say much about more about these unit, but neither is worth sparking. Um, as for Olivia, I don't really have to say much about Olivia. Olivia, she's okay. Um, we were really sparking for Olivia. You didn't really spark it for a Fallen Sword. Uh, as I mentioned, Fallen Sword is not meta all the time for Dark. So if you're go trying to invest purely in Dark, you're gonna need more than just Fallen Swords. So, while they are good, um, generally the best way to play Nier is with Fallen Swords, but it's not perfect, right? Like, Nier comes in with 40% health after reviving from, like, Fairy or her own auto-revive. So, she does not start at full health after she revives, so you would have to pot her or have a way to heal her. So, it's, like, it's not a perfect setup or anything like that, but generally, you do want to run Nier at full health, so... Just know that when you spark in Fallen Sword, not meta everywhere. It's like, it's not meta everywhere, not. Uh, I'll type Olivia, that's Fallen Sword, because people know. Uh, not meta everywhere, so it's, it's not like Ixiba or anything like that, where, you know, or Eden, where, like, generally this is, like, the meta weapon in 99% of builds. This is not the meta weapon for Dark in 99% of builds. Dark does have options, so if you're going to invest in Fallen Sword, just know that you will not always be optimal, even if your grid is like, let's say, five Fallen Swords, like Z or something. Like, it's not always going to be optimal. If you want to be optimal with Dark, you won't be needing multiple grids. So, sorry to say that, Dark players, that you have, like, the best weapons in the game, so, and some of the best characters in the game, and you have a lot of options. Which is a good thing, right? You you have diversity when it comes to dark, right? You don't have to play one standard build that everybody plays. Now let's see the percentage of these character rates up. Wow, this video is actually gonna be 20 minutes long. Huh? Whatever. Um Luckily I have this, right? The notepad, like people can just skip to it to the end of my for my opinions and stuff. Just skim through it. Uh, Olivia, so we got a 0 0.3 rate up. I believe that the rate up should be universal, 0 0.3, right? 0 0.3 average, so that's not bad. 0.3 is okay. Um, as I mentioned about the whole rate up thing in Grand Blue, it just, this is how it, uh, as I mentioned with the whole rate up thing, um, it just, this is Grand Blue, right? The game is just flooded with SSRs. You really can't get much better anymore, unfortunately. So there's no point of dwelling on it or talking about it anymore because it's, that's how it is. So 0.3 rate up characters. It's okay. Average. So, so it's like, I believe it's a 1 in 20, I believe. 1 in 20-ish. 1 in, 1 in 20 temples. One and so I believe one twenty. So that's not that bad. That's still two hundred pulls. Um, as I mentioned, it's not worth sp rolling on a banner if you're not sparking. I don't believe this banner is really worth sparking right now. Um, let me make sure that there's not one character on a banner that's worth sparking though. Also, there's a new update where they sell the grand weapons now, so it's a nice update. Uh, see, I see what they did there. They didn't put Halloween Charlotte as a sparkable unit on this banner. This probably would have been the one thing I told people to spark, 
but just know there's going to be another banner at the end of the month with the light with the um with the halloween units so they do stay until the end of the month i believe I believe that's about it though. I mean, there's not much more to say about this banner. Let's talk about the next banner. So as I mentioned, there's one more banner. Up, upcoming banner. So this would be a, oh, I believe this would be November. Um, Why can I spell right now, bro? November, like fest. Legend Fest. So, if I remember correctly, this should be a all 12 bus. All Halloween raid up, right? I, that's what I believe. It should be a all Halloween raid up banner. Let me take a quick look, though, at the GBF. Um, so I, I want to take a quick look here to make sure that there is a all Halloween raid up banner. I believe there's one for my memory, but I can't guarantee it. So it doesn't hurt for me to, to go back in time and take a little quick look at it. So generally GBF follows a pattern. So, I mean, I, mean, I can do it right here really quick. I'll just follow the pattern. So it should be this one right here. Uh, let's banish this. So this one last year was a event banner for the Knights. Hmm. Is it a two part banner? Renewal of legend, gotcha. Here it is. So this is what I was talking about before. So th they do a rate up banner for all legend fest units, for all Halloween units rather. This was last year's banner. Now this should happen again. But it's only going to be a two-day banner. So, all Halloween Raid up, two-day banner. Oh, you guys probably don't see it fully, right? My fault. I just, I just looked at it on my um my thing. It's a two, it's, so, this is the banner I was talking about here. So, it's a two-day banner. Um, The real kickers right now in this banner right now, I would say, is that Halloween Charlotte is really good for end game players but generally people who are end game should be watching this type of video all right so that's one thing i will mention about this banner in particular i don't expect anything much maybe we'll get uh hmm. Hmm. i'm trying to think if they have anything else rate up i don't know if they'll rate up another weapon i don't believe there was a rate up weapon for the summer banner so there should be no rate up like fest unit. Mm. But I would say possibly, possibly, don't get me wrong now, possible fairy rate up. Maybe, maybe, I don't know. However, expect point two. So expect point two rates because it will be a seven way banner between all the units you will be, you will have to end up expecting a seven way uh seven way uh split between each unit and if they include fairy making it eight units that will be a big wolf um now fairy may not be in the halloween rate up banner and they may save fairy for these other two days but I do believe fairies should be in one or the other. So I don't know which one she'll be in, but it should be a rate up for her in one of the two. That's my opinion. I know this video was much longer than my average video. Um, I had a lot to talk about here. Um, I did take a little bit more time on the units because I, you know, I, I wanted to explain them and go through it. Tell me how you guys feel about it. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.